Well, first of all, uh, let me start by saying that there hasn't been very much research done focusing on nutrition and osteoarthritis. Uh, what we do know is that carrying around extra weight puts um, extra force on the hips and knees and contributes to the development of osteoarthritis, uh, and that losing weight will help manage both hip and knee osteoarthritis. There is some evidence suggesting that making sure that you get adequate vitamin C and D through your diet and supplements can be a benefit to help slow down the progression of osteoarthritis. Small amounts of weight loss in an overweight person reduces the risk of developing osteoarthritis. With each pound of weight loss that you reduce, uh, you reduce the load on your knee by four times. One study showed that an 11 pound weight loss for a female was associated with a greater than 50% decrease in the risk of developing knee osteoarthritis. Research shows that overweight women have nearly four times the risk of developing knee OA. And for overweight men, the risk is five times greater. Being overweight puts an extra three to six times the force through the hips and knees. So even losing a small amount of weight uh, if you're overweight, will take a big load off those joints and with the weight loss gets a relief of symptoms. The body mass index is one way of determining if you need to lose weight. Another, another measure that we use is waist circumference. For women, if your waist is larger than 35 inches or 88 centimeters, and if you're a man and 40 inches for your waist or 102 centimeters, then you should think about losing a few pounds. Well, two things that we know can, that can slow down the progression of osteoarthritis are vitamin D and vitamin C. Uh, there's been some research done on vitamin D and getting adequate blood levels uh, in people with osteoarthritis and it's been shown that it will slow down the progression of osteoarthritis. Getting enough vitamin D in Canada can sometimes be a challenging thing as we do get most of our vitamin D from sunshine. In the winter months in Canada we do not get enough sunshine to produce enough vitamin D. And in the summer months, say from about Oct from April till October, we use sunscreen, which blocks our vitamin D production by up to 95%. So getting enough vitamin D from the sun doesn't usually happen, and it's challenging getting enough vitamin D from our foods. So currently the Canadian Dermatology Association and the Canadian Cancer Society are recommending 1,000 international units of vitamin D per day for adults. And the official recommendations for North America are currently under review, so stay tuned. Calcium's um, a very important component to making our bones and teeth strong and healthy. And in order for calcium to be absorbed in the body, you need adequate vitamin D for calcium to be properly used. So vitamin D is very important from a number of standpoints. Uh, despite the importance of vitamin D, research shows that there is a high prevalence of vitamin D deficiency in many populations, uh, including women being treated for osteoporosis, which is another bone condition, weakening of the bones. In one study, it showed that more than half of North American women receiving therapy to treat or prevent osteoporosis have vitamin D inadequacy. So vitamin D is very important. if you're not getting enough vitamin D from um, the sun, consider a vitamin D supplement. And it is in most multivitamins, so check how much you're getting. Also, a lot of calcium supplements also contain vitamin D. So look at all your sources, look at how much vitamin D you're getting from your diet, 100 international units from a glass of milk, um, higher in fish. So those are some sources. Vitamin C is another uh, good nutrient, and it has been shown that eating enough 
of vitamin C through your diet can help slow down the progression of uh, osteoarthritis symptoms as well. So that's good sources being things like citrus fruit, oranges, um, tomatoes, strawberries, guavas, uh, papaya. There's a lot of foods that are very rich in vitamin C. So if you're eating a wide variety from your fruit group, um, fruit and vegetables, you should be getting enough vitamin C. Omega-3s, uh, which are a, sub, a component of a lot of foods, uh, primarily found in fish, um, flaxseed, hemp seed, chia, uh, they have been shown to be helpful with regard to inflammation and with regard to heart health. So as far as making a relationship between osteoarthritis and omega-3s and whether it's beneficial, we need more research to say, take your omega-3s, it'll help your arthritis. We don't really know today if that's the case. But what we do know about omega-3s is that the long-chain fatty acids found in fish have been found to be beneficial with rheumatoid arthritis. So eat your omega-3s. Glucosamine is another nutrient that we commonly hear about in the news. Uh, a lot of people ask questions, should I be taking it, should I not be taking it? The, um, there's been a lot of studies done with regards to glucosamine and whether or not it is helpful in our osteoarthritis clients. Um, some studies support the use, while others do not. Uh, and you've got to consider the studies and which form of glucosamine was tested. So I say to clients, if you're going to try glucosamine, glucosamine sulfate is the best form to try. Look for a product that has an NPN or a natural product number on the package, which means it has been approved through Health Canada as a safe product to go on the shelf. And be aware that it can take one to two months after you start taking glucosamine sulfate for you to notice any benefits from the product. That being said, um, the studies indicate that it is of very little use when you have um, early OA, early osteoarthritis, and that it may be a benefit for your more advanced cases. So moderate to severe has been sh shown to have some relief with glucosamine. You shouldn't take glucosamine if you are on blood thinners and please, please, whenever you're taking any kind of natural product, do run it by your doctor or pharmacist because it could interact with some of the medications that you're already taking. The other thing to consider when you're looking at a natural supplement is can you afford it? Because quite often they are very expensive and does the benefit uh, really warrant you purchasing the product? In Canada, natural supplements, although they do get uh, a natural product number and get on the shelf, quite often when testing is done later on, it's found that they don't necessarily contain what it says on the label. So that's one other thing to be aware of.